My next patron question is from Morgan, who wants to know my thoughts on a superior movie trend that occurred in the 90s. Retrospective critics tend to place The Rocketeer, The Shadow, and The Phantom as a batch of movies that do not connect well with audiences because of the time period they are set in. While I find that unlikely, I wonder if there was another reason why these three did not do so well. Not only am I curious to know which of these three you feel is better, but also why didn't these franchise starters catch on with moviegoers at the time? I have often thought about this brief era, when some of the super movies being produced usually took place in a historical time period and harkened back to old adventure serials. The reason for this can likely be attributed to the success of Tim Burton's Batman, even though that movie was set in the present day. The Art Deco architecture of Gotham City just gave it the feel of the 1930s. I also think the popularity of the Indiana Jones movies also played a role. Between The Rocketeer, The Shadow, and The Phantom, I do think The Rocketeer is easily the best of the three. Joe Johnston and his team did such a lovely job of giving the film an old-school vibe and made great use of the period setting. The mixing of the hollow locations with the World War II storyline showing the characters going up against the Nazis really helps in achieving that pulpy adventure feel the filmmakers were going for. It feels exactly like the kind of film produced by Hollywood after the United States entered World War II, as a middle finger to the enemy and to drum up support for the war effort. The main hero, Cliff Sicord, is a flawed but likable lead, and he gets some great scenes with Jennifer Connelly as his love interest and Alan Arkin as his best friend. I also love the use of Howard Hughes in the movie, and Timothy Dalton has an excellent villainous turn as an actor in Cahoots with Germany. The production values are superb, with some magnificent sets, impressive special effects, and James Horner's wonderful score. There's just a genuine feel-good element to this film, as we see big-hearted heroes go up against some dastardly villains. It's a shame The Rocketeer did not find an audience on original release. Part of the blame might have been the decision to switch the film from the Touchstone Pictures label to Walt Disney Pictures. While it's perfectly appropriate for children, The Rocketeer just has more of a Touchstone vibe to it. Disney themselves even seemed to realize this, as they reverted it back to Touchstone for the international release, although it was too little too late by then. The family, teenage, and young adult audience also appeared to be more enchanted by Robin Hood Prince of Thieves at the time. Even a re-release of 101 Dalmatians a few weeks later pulled in more of the family crowd. Thankfully, the film found a much more appreciative audience later on. Regarding The Shadow and The Phantom, I actually have similar opinions towards both of them. Both of them seem to operate on the idea that most of the audience was already familiar with these superheroes, even though they were nowhere near as recognized as Batman and Superman were in the 90s. They especially rushed through the origin story at breakneck speed, with the opening of The Shadow especially leaving me confused. One thing I'll give The Shadow is that the production design is quite nice to look at. There's one particularly inventive scene where we see a message go through a bunch of tubes to the office of The Shadow, aka Lamont Cranston. Most of the actors also do capture the 1930s B-movie style of acting. Tim Curry especially takes the opportunity to ham it up. The only exception is Alec Baldwin as Cranston. He can usually be counted on to deliver a worthwhile performance, but I don't think The Shadow is his best work. It does not help that I thought his character was flatly written, and I never found him particularly compelling. The villain is also a bore to watch, and the story was largely unengaging and a bit of a mess. Why did the shadow flop? It's possible audiences assumed he was a ripoff of Batman, even though the character actually predates the Dark Knight by almost a decade. While DC had published a few shadow comics not long before the film's release, I don't think he had quite the same name recognition with viewers. Before the film opened in 1994, his only other screen appearances were some B-movies in the 30s and 40s, and a failed television pilot in the 50s. Incidentally, that summer saw the release of The Mask, another film of a 30s-like visual aesthetic and based on a comic book with cult appeal. However, the zaniness of Jim Carrey and the more comical tone helped sell it better to a mainstream crowd. As for The Phantom, it's a movie I'll describe as no style, no substance. I did not think the hero, Kit Walker, had much personality to speak of, and his love interest was not much better. The villain was way too over the top of my liking, with Treat Williams trying too hard of his performance. The plot involving some magical skulls did not excite me in any way, the attempts at humor fell flat, and the action largely underwhelmed. Even the production design did not do it for me, although Roger Ebert would disagree with me on that last point. This idea. movie is worth seeing for the production design by Paul Peters. This is one mm. of the greatest looking movies I've the interior, ever seen. The colors, okay. the interiors. The, in, the interior of the Skull Cave yeah, and what, is very and well And what about done. Drax's office in New York? That looks fabulous. But it's a good looking movie. Funny enough, while the absurdity of the Phantom's costume is one of the biggest criticisms I've seen given towards the movie, I actually was not that bothered by it. That is, after all, what he looked like in the comics. Although it's possible that outfit is one reason the film flopped. 
One of the few positives I can give the film is Catherine Zeta-Jones, who has a delightful turn as the leader of a group of air pirates. I actually think she had more chemistry with Christy Swanson than Billy Zane did. The Phantom is probably a little more well-known than The Shadow, as he did have an animated series around that time, although only lasted 35 episodes. My best guess is viewers found it a little too silly, especially compared to the more successful action films released in the summer of 1996, like Mission Impossible and The Rock, and it did not have the large-scale spectacle of Twister and Independence Day either. I do wish with this explosion of superhero movies we have now, we got more period pieces. Captain America The First Avenger is one of the few to come out in the last few decades, and I really like that one. It's precisely because of the World War II setting and Steve Rogers going around trying to fight Nazis that it's my favorite Captain America movie. It's not a coincidence that movie was directed by Joe Johnston, as Kevin Feige cited The Rocketeer as one of the primary reasons he was hired. Anyway, what do you think of these three 90s superhero movies? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for your question, Morgan.